Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, I am super excited to have with me Boyson Hodgson. Welcome, Boyson. Hi, Ben. How are you? Doing great. You? I'm doing okay. I am uh, settling into my office on a Monday morning and uh, dealing with critters and coffee and kids and the whole life of dad and sounds, life of man. Sounds like a perfect Monday morning and no way, no better way to get it started than talking about man stuff. That's, that's what I always say, or, or maybe I'm just starting to say right now. Um, you are the Marketing and Communications Director for the Mankind Project USA, and uh, I know there's a, a whole lot more to you than uh, just your title, but let's go ahead and, and dive right in. Tell us a little bit about your, your superhero origin story before you were the, a, a champion of mankind. <laughs> My superhero origin story. Uh, like most superheroes, I didn't know I was a superhero. Of course. Uh, and I still don't. Um, <laughs> origin story, uh, small town boy upstate New York. I grew up in a large family of boys. My mom gave birth to six sons. And I was uh, number two son in okay. that in that list um, and had kind of an idyllic first 10 years, uh, small town. My dad was the, the town veterinarian, the village veterinarian. And, uh, and my childhood was filled with farm animals and fields and uh, tall grass and rolling hills of upstate New York and a tiny elementary school and, that whole kind of thing. I have beautiful, beautiful childhood memories. And then 10 years old, everything kind of uh, changed. Things okay. changed. My folks got divorced. Um, a lot of movement, lots of movement. So I ended up being kind of uh, then one of, one of four or five boys at that time living with a single mom and dad Wednesdays and every other weekend and then remarriages and more divorces and more remarriages and more movement and more. So from 11, things kind of went to chaos. Right. Uh, and I had a very kind of chaotic and splintered uh, teen years adolescence uh yeah got out of small town moved uh did uh two years at cornell university and then stayed in ithaca new york and in the little city and bartended and did that kind of stuff and started getting into marketing there and then moved to massachusetts and got my degree and ended up in marketing did a long stint in my 20s of uh, paying the price for my father's sins is kind of how I look back on it now. Um, <laughs> what do you mean by that? I ended up in a relationship that was just not very healthy, not healthy for her, not healthy for me. And uh, a lot of that relationship was about trying to prove myself a good man. Okay. Trying to prove that I was that I was a good guy, that I could, that I could save, the, save the girl and save the world. Uh, not so healthy. It was not very healthy. So my 20s were uh, kind of a descent, and I ended up in uh, 30 years old, basically had no male friends, was disconnected from, from everyone, very disconnected from myself in, right. in a not healthy not healthy place, like in, in everything. And I had known about this Mankind Project and the, our training, the New Warrior Training Adventure for years. A bunch of my family had done it. So okay. all these men in my family that I grew up around, and yet I was completely disconnected from men, from myself as a man, from masculinity generally. And I had been hearing about the Mankind Project and saying, no, 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 I don't want that. I'm fine. I'm good. I got my books. I've done the reading. You know, I've, I've read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I'm all good. Right, exactly. Um, and uh, I was in enough pain in my early 30s and out of that relationship and was in a new relationship a little while later with the woman who is now my wife of uh, 12 and a half years. And uh, recognized immediately that I was going to start repeating the same patterns that I had been doing in that first relationship. And 
recognizing the pain, recognizing that there was some level of awareness that I was missing that I now wanted. Right. I wanted male friends and I wanted connection and I wanted, uh, I wanted to be a better man in a different way than I had been trying to be. Uh, and by happenstance and kismet, uh, a chiropractor who knew nothing about me, nothing about my background. I was seeing a chiropractor for low back issues, came out of the room about the second weekend of treatment. Um, he follows me out into the hallway. This is Wayne Garfinkel. And Wayne says, Poison, I mean, I can see you've got a lot of stuff going on in your body. Like I can see a whole lot of release going on. I'm, I, you know, I'm just watching you change. I'm watching things shift. And I'm just curious, have you ever heard of this thing called the New Warrior Training Adventure? <laughs> After seven and a half years of saying, no, screw you to all my brothers, then here it comes again. Right. And it was like, all right, fine. Okay. I give up. I give up. <laughs> and so I did that. And then the, the rest is kind of, the rest is history. That was 13 years ago, almost 14 years ago. And uh, that beginning process and the work that I've done then since then has, has, uh, changed, changed everything. Right. Yeah. I think, um, it's a, it's a great, great origin story there. I think I want to highlight a couple of points. One, I, I identify a lot with that coming to that, that point in your thirties where you're, you're realizing that what you, what you've been trying to do isn't working anymore. And you kind of come to this point where, uh, coping mechanisms and every, every pattern that you've laid is just like starting to unravel as you're like, no, it's just, this is not how it was supposed to be. And there's this kind of dissatisfaction with your, with your lot in life. And then the second um, point that, that resonated with me is the fact that you probably were in a lot of uh, physical pain as your chiropractor noticed that probably had a lot of uh, emotional underpinnings to it that uh, was just uh, not being expressed and then turning into the physical. And um, for, for people listening, that, that may sound a little woo-woo, but it, it is such a thing when you can't be fully expressed, it just gets repressed and that sits in your muscles and it tightens up and it's, and it's no fun. The, the, the truth is in our bodies. There, our bodies, there's a book by uh, Beth, uh, Bessel van der Kolk, um, the, our bodies keep the score, right? Um, yeah, our bodies know what's up. Even if we, even if we consciously don't know what's up, our bodies are storing all the emotional subtext and information of the choices we make. Right. And often alcohol or drugs, we, we try and try and ignore that, uh, but eventually catches up with us. Coping mechanisms are wonderful, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Until they stop working. Yes. Um, Awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about what you do as the um, marketing and communications director for Mankind Project USA. That's a funny question. Uh, <laughs> I answer a lot of email. <laughs> That's one of the things that I do. So oh, I've had the, I've had the huge privilege of, I just celebrated my birthday this past weekend. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you. 47. Woohoo. Um, yeah. And uh, I have the huge honor of being connected to a network of men that's global. Um, you know, I, I got birthday messages from men that I actually know and have been in physical space with and have been in satin circles with and men's circles with from, uh, you know, from, well, I got messages from all seven continents, but I don't know face to face everybody from seven continents. And hundreds of messages from men around the United States who, as I read through the messages, the visceral response of having been in intentional, conscious, connected space, like men who I know on an emotional level, right? men who I know, um, yeah, with some, with some depth, like they've, they've seen my joy. I've seen their joy. I've seen their sorrows. I've seen their anger in a like real authentic way. So, you know, sitting in the position that I'm in, I have the opportunity to connect with men around the world in a way that I think is, is rare and beautiful. And also to be in conversations like this, where I get to talk about I get to talk about, you know, what it means to be a man 
what it means to find my place and to help other men find their place in a healthy, fulfilled, powerful way in today, in today's society, you know, not, not hearkening back to, you know, reclaiming some thing that's gone because that's gone. Like there is, we're not bringing back any old way of being. There's only a new way of being. Yeah. We're not, we're not going out and hunting anymore and bringing back the carcass. It, yeah. And for some of us, that may be true. There may be those of us who are going out hunting and bringing back the carcass, but for the most of us, you know, this is the world that we have to live in and, and evolve or die. Right. So what does it mean to find our place in society as, as modern men and tap everything that we can um, to, to be fulfilled and happy and make a positive contribution and, you know, be part of the betterment of our society. So I think that's a, it's a great transition into, um, you know, what we spoke about before we started filming is, is how do men find their, their place in society, in the world? That's, uh, you know, I think we've definitely shifted from this kind of, um, macho male. Um, we've, you know, and there we've also shifted from like the really sensitive guy that um, the sensitive new age guy and uh, trying to find a, a happy medium in the world today. What's uh, what's your take on, on where we're at right now? Yeah, I think we're struggling. Um, uh, something that, yeah, I think we're struggling to, to know. And that's a good thing. Like evolution is a struggle and without the, without the pain of the environment, to kind of urge us forward that that really is what can motivate that's the fire that can drive the evolution and i think that for men there we have some opportunities these days to find our place in society um consciously by choosing to go into places that are kind of counter to what the old style masculinity, the old culture has been telling us is the right way to go for men. Okay. So we've been told the right way to go. You know, what we get from culture is, uh, you know, get your armor together, start building your armor when you're about four years old, start figuring out how to shut down uh, your emotions, how to pack away as much of the uncomfortable and vulnerable stuff Um starting in our childhoods, start packing that into the bag, right? You're not going to need that to be a man. <laughs> right. You're not going to need that. You're not going to need that sensitivity to be a man. Right? <laughs> and uh, you're not going to need vulnerability to be a man. And you're not going to need uncertainty to be a man. And you're not going to need intuition to be a man. And a lot of these things. And I think is, you know, we're in a beautiful point in history because now even opposed, even connected to 10 years ago, like what I see on television, what I see in mainstream culture, what I see being how men are being portrayed these days is getting fuller and rounder and richer and more emotional and more real. Right. You know, there's so much good stuff out there. There are di lots of different new models of, of manhood that I think it's easier, much easier to tap into that. And when you, when I hear the call to actually start doing something about that, and we'll come back to this idea of the call, okay. um, there are opportunities. There are lots of opportunities out there to really go and do that deep work with other men, also intent and conscious and prepared to do that deep work to find my place. Right. My place, not like your place, my place in, in my world and in culture. So I know one of those pieces of work that a man can do that I want to touch on because I've heard so many good things from um, other colleagues that we probably both know is uh, the new warrior training that you guys do as a, as a way to uh, initiate men into this um, new way of being. Can you tell us a little bit about that transformational weekend? That That's one of your guys' hallmarks. I can. Yeah. Our flagship training in the Mankind Project is called the New Warrior Training Adventure. Uh, 
We started doing the new warrior training in January of 1985. And uh, both of the living founders own completely and upfront, like we had no idea what the hell we were doing when started. they created this thing, <laughs> right? They had no idea what they were starting. They got together and said, we need, we need this. We need something for men. We need men to have a place to like do this work, to do whatever it is that they need to do to get all this stuff out, to get connected, to do all this stuff. So they just threw a whole bunch of stuff in that they had done before and created some ritual and packed it full of processes and made it physically, physically fairly rigorous and intense and emotionally very rigorous and intense and created this weekend that was initially called the Wild Man Weekend, <laughs> right? In 1980, yep. 1984, 85. Now, here we are almost 35 years later, and that weekend, that flagship has has evolved. It's changed. There are things about it that we do today that we didn't do then. There's a lot that's been brought in, a lot of new consciousness, a lot of new frameworks and mental maps that have been brought in, new ways of doing the work that have been brought in. But the process is essentially the same. And the process is based around this idea. And, and as I said, they didn't know they were setting this up when they set it up, but it's like a hero's journey. Right. So it's a disconnection from my stuff, my cell, my wallet, my credentials, the suit that I'm wearing, the shoes on my feet. It's a disconnection from all of those trappings that I wear as who I am. Right. And an entrance into a container that is, that is very intentionally disconnected from most of what we experience as men today and with other men. So, you know, unique stuff about what we do. So if there are 30 participants on a weekend, there's going to be 40 to 45 staff. Well, wow. so better than one to one ratio. Some of those staff guys will have done this same process two months ago and some of them did it 25 years ago. Right. So there'll be guys with brand new rookie experience, first time doing the processes, and there'll be guys there with literally decades and hundreds of trainings, thousands of hours of this type of work specific to what we do with men. Um, and the process of going through the weekend is uh, an intentional entrance into a process driven, experiential, intense weekend geared toward helping you, one man, find what you came to get. Uh, and you might get it two hours after you walk in the door on Friday night, and you right. might not get it until two o'clock on Sunday. But the idea is to help you find your place in uh, that circle, in your experience of being alive on the planet in a container with other men. I know um, from, from people I've talked to and, and reading the testimonials, it, it's, it's a game changer for people. Um, you know, they, they discover things about themselves. They are able to bond with men and they've never been able to do before. Um, I know it, it's, it's probably a simplification to ask, you know, what, what is like the, the magic piece of it, but um, what do you, if you're trying to synthesize what, how it unlocks this magic, what would you say it is? How we unlock the magic. Um, I think it's in the combination of things. I think that they found a unique kind of special sauce uh, to working with men that engages engages that sensitive new age guy. I was that sensitive new age guy. Engages that guy in a process in a way that allows him to see, allowed me to see my strength and power and what I was capable of being. Right. On the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, hardened, you know, tattooed, beard wearing, hard drinking biker dudes hard guys, tough guys, right? go through this process 
And when they crack, the nurturing, the sensitivity, the deep caring that they feel, you know, can, can come out. And so imagine putting all those guys in one very hot container together right? where they get to witness like, holy shit, that dude is nothing like me. And that dude is exactly like me. Right. And 70 guys doing that in a container. And I think that that is magical. There is something magic about that. And I think we're in a, we're in a time and place where, you know, guys, we function in our head. Our culture works very much in our heads, right? We're, we're all intellectual. We're cognitive. It's very cognitive driven culture in, in the new warrior training adventure. And in the work that we do, like there's an intentionality about connecting head, heart, and soul. We talk about it as, you know, head, my, my head's up, my spirit, my head's in, the, in spirit, right? right? And my soul is grounded, my feet are anchored, my heart is open. And it sounds schlocky, right? <laughs> but what does it mean to be an open-hearted man? What is, the, what is the sensory felt experience of living with all of my pieces integrated? It's, it's different and it takes models. You know, we've kind of, we model for men and mentor, co-mentor men to work with each other, to see what we're missing, to see our blind spots, to point out our shadows to each other, you know, to be the light that casts the shadow so that Ben, you can turn around and say, Oh fuck. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's that thing I've been missing about myself. Right. Yeah. I think, um, you know, uh, for, for people that haven't been through that sort of work, they can identify with the feeling of, of incongruence, right? Like the, the dissatisfaction and the, that, that kind of underlying current of angst and that feeling of, I know I'm meant for something more, but I don't know what it is. And then I think, you know, when you kind of bring those things in alignment, um, you're much, you, you know, you create that open, channel for that where that that angst goes away and it doesn't bring this like kind of epiphany of certainty but you know that uh, you, you're following the right direction because you're more in touch with all three of those operating together which which allows you to flow a lot easier in the world yeah congruence is definitely it's it's a word that we use in the new warrior training a word, integrity is another word that we use a lot so that integrity how am i integrated um I think that's definitely true. And you and I started talking about choices before we got on the phone. And for me, that's been, it's paradoxical, right? I like being certain. I like knowing what's going on. I like right. having the right answers. I like being able to fix things. That's all true. And my most profound growth as a man has come through experiences of not knowing. Right. In an ongoing way. And, uh, and in those experience of, experiences of not knowing, having the tools to be able to be with whatever is happening in those times. So for me, you know, I was very heady. I was very cognitive. Having the experiential understanding of what's going on in my body, oh, I know that when... I feel this sensation in my body. That's an indication of something that's going on. I know what fear feels like. Right. I know where shame lives in my body. I know the difference between, you know, healthy anger and ego protective anger. Right. You know, I can draw those distinctions. And for me, like what better thing is there for a dude to have than more tools to make better choices. Right. So having access to all of that information that's coming from within and without, um, especially from within all that information, all that wisdom that's in me that I can now sit with and parse out uh, and use to make decisions. Yep. Yeah. I think the, the kind of opposite of that is when there's this um, wall that's built by the ego that, 
doesn't that, that generally wants to stay away from the unknown because it's there to protect you. And then, um, you know, I was just talking about this with somebody else recently where, you know, you may have this underlying rule in your life that, you know, the devil, you know, is better than the devil that you don't know. And then, you know, if, if you operate on that, you close yourself up to, um, you know, all the greatness that you may be capable of. Um, so I think that might be a nice segue into the calling. So tell us a little bit about the calling. The call, yeah. Um, I, have to, I have talked about this before, but the image that I bring to mind is, you know, this is the, this is the red phone. This is the phone that starts ringing and it doesn't stop until you pick it up. It's the Matrix movie. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of different, you know, a lot of different mytho- uh, archetypal kind of views of the world that when the hero hears something in himself or herself, the call to adventure, like there's something inside, there's a little voice inside that's saying, as you've already pointed out, you know, there's some, I know there's more. I know there's more in me. I know there's more opportunity possibility out there for me. And when we hear it in our culture, where do you go with that? Where do we take that call? How do, how does a modern man answer that call in his life? And this is one of those, the new warrior training adventure is one of those ways to really answer the call to a deeper adventure, not to, Oh, I hear a call, so I'm going to go skydiving. Like, great. Do that. And that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, right? Do that. <laughs> and do the soul work, too. You know, find a way, find a place to access that. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm imagining a soul work, uh, while, while you can open up to it on a weekend, probably needs to be an, an ongoing process. So uh, what, what happens to that soul work after the weekend is, is complete. Nice job on the transitions. Uh, <laughs> meta, meta information on what we're doing. Um, yeah, so after the weekend, and again, the guys who created this process had no idea that they were gonna create this, that this was gonna happen. Um, the Mankind Project in the United States, we have about 700 men's groups operating weekly or bi-weekly, plus virtual men's groups you know, around the, around the world, over well over a thousand men's groups operating where we get the opportunity to practice this deepening understanding, this, this uh, new way of being as men. And I think for a lot of guys, like, yeah, the weekend's like, pow, blew my head off. Woo-hoo. <laughs> you know, two weeks later, it's like, ah, duh, I'm, I'm back in it right? I'm back in that stuff. The blinders come back on. It's very easy for me to slip into old habits. It's very easy for me to lose sight of the deeper insights that I've had into myself. So we have men's groups where we practice this kind of stuff in an ongoing way. So getting more tools and, uh, and more under self understanding and more understanding of how others operate. And for me, that has been, um, yeah. I don't know what I do without my guys. I don't know what I do. I have men in my life who I am deeply connected with, who know what's going on with me before I ever even tell them. Right. You know, I can make a phone call and a guy will pick up the phone and ask me how I'm doing. And it doesn't matter what actually comes out of my mouth. They're going to know what's going on. Right. Right they understand me at that level. And that, like, I think that's, that has made my marriage that has done unbelievable things for my ability to stay connected in my marriage and be positive. That has saved my butt a hundred times as a parent. I have a place to take the the crap. (laughs) Literally and figuratively. (laughs) Literally, Literally and figuratively. Yes. Well, I can go to my group of men and, do the work on myself so that I can get clear. Right. Cause it isn't about my wife and it isn't about my kids. It's about me. 
It's about what's in the way of me being present, accepting, understanding, heart-centered, awake in my yeah. life. Yeah, no, that makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. And I can see, um, you know, the, the power of not trying to put that on any one, you know, best friend that you have or trying to work everything out with your wife because you need to have a support system there. And, and I think um, in this day and age, there's just not many places where you can have that support system or, or go to help. And um, more and more people are further isolated. Um, so I think as, as the years go on and as our digital revolution, um, you know, continues that that problem will only get worse unless we're conscious about building communities because it's, it, it's tough. Yeah, right. So capitalist model, externalizing costs, right? How masculine of a thing is that? So my emotional life, that shutdownness that we get taught as men, all we're doing actually, usually, is externalizing that cost onto other people. And for men, for most of us, a lot of that ends up on our primary partner, whoever that is. Right. So removing that burden from my wife and taking the responsibility. Wow. What a manly thing. Taking responsibility, <laughs> taking the responsibility of that in into myself, right? How it, it frees my wife to be more who she is. Right. And it frees me to be, uh, to stand up. Yeah. In a way that I didn't know how to before. What are some of the, the transformations that you've seen from people? Like when you think about like, oh my God, that's crazy what this guy did after opening himself up in this way. Is there anything that comes to mind when I ask that question? Yeah, I've seen, um, whew, yeah, I've seen a lot of guys over the course of time change, like fundamentally change how they encounter the world. M massive career changes. Um, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the, on the brink of divorce to bringing their marriage and family back together. That's, that's common. Right. Also common and, you know, harder to talk about, <laughs> but guys who have been in, in terrible relationships, unhealthy relationships with themselves and with their partners, ending those relationships to right. free them up and to free their partners up. Um, I've seen good divorces. Like that's, that's a pretty profound thing for kids, especially. And as a kid, I went through some shitty divorces, <laughs> right? Had my parents had the skill to do that in a better way. I've seen a lot of that transformation and I've seen mission in the world. Guys, one of the things that we get on the new warrior training adventure is a mission statement okay. for myself that I generate. Those mission statements can be anything from, you know, I create a world of loving connection for my family by being open. Great. I create a world of educational transformation by building schools for youth. Yep. Seen that happen too. <laughs> so there are, you know, over a hundred organizations and, and things that have grown out of the Mankind Project, working with young men, working with young men and women, working in prisons, working with veterans, working with uh, victims and perpetrators of domestic violence, working in environment, working in business, working, you know, to bring this kind of soul-based world uh, to bear in other places. And it's incredible the impact that is made by men on mission. So it's, it's an amazing ripple effect. And, you know, it all, it all starts with connecting back to the source. Yes. Awesome. Is there anything that we, that we haven't gone over today that you think we need to mention to the audience before we wrap things up? Uh, if you're a guy listening to this um, and you're hearing the call, might as well take action because it's not going to stop calling. <laughs> the phone's not going to stop ringing until you answer it. Um, 
All right. I think that's a, that's a great place to, to wrap up. And then, you know, I agree taking, taking action on those, whether it be a, a loud voice or a small voice or a, a ring that's in the back of your mind, um, always, always yields good results as opposed to uh, resisting that. So I, uh, I second that. Yes. Thank you. Great. So uh, where can people find more about the, the new warrior training and, and uh, get in touch with you if they need to? Uh, our main website, mkp.org. Uh, mkp.org is our main website. You'll find us on Facebook, the mankind project. Um, yeah, look us up. We're out there. All right. Well, really appreciate you uh, sharing the information about the mankind project and, and about manhood, your story. And, um, you know, I think there's so much value in what you guys do and, and the amount that you guys are able to transform is, is amazing. So uh, I, I applaud the work that you guys are doing. Thank you very much, Ben. It's been great. Mm-hmm.